Welcome back to Aspro's Outdoors podcast style. We have been talking and really wanting to do something like this for a long time now. And we thought today is the day. So here we are. I know we've been talking about this for months. And months. And more months. Hopefully if you all do like this, we will start doing this more often and especially actually get this down, grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, wherever you are on a drive or I don't know, um, going to sleep at your grandma's house on a couch, just wherever you are, yeah. you sit back, relax, enjoy the group of topics that we're going to go through tonight. So, Well, actually we're just talking about one for the most part. It's Battle on Bagel. Uh, I wanted to talk about other stuff more recently, but really the ice fishing season has kind of sucked. And even though that it's just one topic, it's one really yeah, big topic. Like anyone that's kind of ice fishing knows Battle on Bago. Like, if you don't know Battle on Bago, I'm so glad you're listening because I really hope you can be part of this. Like we've had some adventures. Definitely. This it's is going to be the 16th Battle on Bago that they crazy. put on, and they put on over two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars worth of prizes. And that number goes up every single year. Like they get more and more prizes. They give away a truck. I mean, every year they give away a truck, thirty or what is it, plus thirty thousand dollars on another prize. Yeah, and so ten thousand um, dollar prizes, and it's really cool too because it's like first through tenth prize gets yep. a prize, biggest fish. That's what they're basing it off yeah. of, and then after that, it's every five prizes. Yeah. So it's like, and then it's a raffle too. So they make the number one guy. What's he get? He gets a cooler. He gets so you get to be the awesome guy <laughs> with a cooler. Yeti cooler. No, you get to be caught, the cool guy with the cooler. Wow, well, yeah, the cool guy with the cooler. But hey, at least you get the street credit that you caught that big of a fish. So yeah. at least you have that. But if you do, I think it's usually, they randomize which number it is, I yeah. think, usually. But it's around the thousandth place from what, it, from what I've noticed. Uh, you around, mean the truck? Oh, the truck's usually 2,000th place. Usually? Say that once. 2,000th. Is, isn't it 2,000th place or is it 150th? I mean, they do kind of change they, it They out. change it up. So I think 400th is a boat. So if you need a boat. Get 400th you know. place. Figure that out. Yeah. I don't know. Catch a bunch of fish. Get a bunch of tickets. But last year. So for me, Battle and Bagel is like Christmas time. Like, yeah. It doesn't take the place of Jesus Christ by any means. But it's, I guess I should say it's more like my birthday. Yeah. It's you know, it's birthday. like. You could take my birthday and just shove that in a dusty corner and give me Battle of Bagel. <laughs> like, yeah. Battle of Bagel is so much better. It's, it really it's enjoyable. is. It's like, like, there's just something about it. There's like It's the only time I'm excited to wake up in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> really. You know, yeah. We get up at like 3 in the morning. We get go. up 3, sometimes even 2.30, depending on how what the conditions are out. It's a crazy competition. Like you, if you yeah. get there too late and stuff, if this tells you just how packed it is, there's a lot of launches on Lake Winnebago. Lake Winnebago is the largest inland lake yep. in the world, from what I know. I, there might be one. Definitely in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin, I know it is, and in the United States, I know it is, but I'm Fond not Lake sure. County. <laughs> well, Fond Lake County, definitely. But I know inside the United States, it's the biggest inland lake, meaning that it's the yeah. biggest lake contained inside one state. It's huge. It's absolutely huge, and it has boat launch after boat launch after boat launch. Yeah. And still, you can get there at 5 a.m. If you get there a little too late, 5:30, every parking space will be taken. And I always see like Brother Town, like as soon as that six o'clock, because the tournament starts at six o'clock. You see like literally one to two miles of cars bumper to bumpers on the road like that's a lot of people I, yeah. I've heard it's the, between eight and twelve thousand participants. It's every it's single crazy. year Twelve thousand twelve thousand up to I believe I've heard up to twelve thousand now though That's just hearsay. So you'll have to actually do your research. That's not what I'm doing here So <laughs> it also and if you don't know this about the battle and bagel tournament and you don't know about it too well Basically, it's not just like Winnebago like Winnebago has a bunch of chain lakes on it so it's not just the main lake, it also has a few lakes running off of it and as like well. Like Poygan? Yeah, so there's like Poygan yeah. and I think maybe one other. And there's also yeah. certain areas that are allowed, they have maps that they give out to everybody and they post it online. You can find it on their Facebook page at Battle and Bago. Uh, just look up Battle and Bago Facebook page. And, and if you're new to the area, kind of like, there's like three main areas that I know of that people go out of. You go out of Merritt, which is out of Air Oshkosh, off yep. Merritt Street, which is like right next to the tent, so it's like <clears> in on, you can register your fish really quickly. People seem to do pretty well over there. They do. Uh, Brother it's Town. It's kind of hit and miss, though, like anywhere. And 
I'm kind of partial to Brother Town as far as like they seem like they do a really good job checking the roads. They do. They have really really good teams out there. The roads are plowed. plowed. They give you tons of updates all the time. They're out but there it's constantly. busy out there all the time. So that is one really big downside to that being in that area, I guess. So sometimes I go to Pipe because it's like lower south of, <laughs> south of there. Yeah, that'd be south. Yeah, there. so it, pipe is pretty decent, but they don't have any roads plowed. So if there's a lot of snow and you're walking, good luck. Or if you're driving with two wheel drive, good luck. <laughs> I hope you have a buddy. So and a shovel, uh, yeah. flamethrower. Flame. That'd be actually yeah. entertaining. So imagine that video. When I last with year a was actually really crazy because we had 50 mile an hour winds. Yeah, it was nuts. And then we're out there and we had a snow squeal or squall. Squirrel? It's not a squeal, it's a squall. A squall? Yeah, a squall. Uh, that's the only time I ever heard of it. It was just when we were on Battle Bank, all of a sudden, like, your phones were blowing up. Everyone's like, get off! Oh, there you go, you It was like 50 mile an hour winds, and then we timed it out just right. Like, yeah. we got off the ice, and got into just, your garage, and then it, like, pounded. It I mean, just, it, I've seen snow, but, like... It looked like somebody literally just took a bin full of snow and just... Dumped it upside right your down. Face. Right. It was like it wasn't even snow. It was like if they already compacted. Like it was falling in snowballs already. Yeah, it was really insane. It was like probably two inches in five minutes. Yeah, I've never was... seen that in my life. And I know a lot of guys got stuck and stranded out there. Yeah. So when you're out there, you really gotta watch the weather, but have fun with it. We were actually really stupid. I took oh, my man. snowmobile out there. There's no snow. There was no snow on the ice until after the the squeal, the squall, squall, yeah. the snowstorm, the big gigantic blizzard. Like I, I th think it's called a squeal because you like squeal because you're screaming because it's ah! so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is fair. That but is we fair. went out on bare ice. I had no. Maybe we shouldn't tell them how stupid I am. But yeah, we had like what are the um, no scratchers on the snowmobile either or nothing. So like the grip was horrible. Yeah. And then with that 50 mile an hour winds coming back in, we literally were going straight. Like you go straight, but it was like it was like this. So it was like on an angle. It was literally blowing us. So you had to readjust. Yeah. And, so you were uh, pretty much fighting the wind. I'll the whole never way. take my snowmobile out there again. What's I broke my butt. <laughs> not on not on bare ice. I wouldn't. Plus, I don't have a snowmobile because I sold my snowmobile. Get ready for later on this year because I sold it to buy a bigger boat. For us. So I got rid of my snowmobile, but last year we had it and we were on bare ice and that was really stupid. We should have just taken the car out there, but it was, I wanted to take the snowmobile. You just bought the snowmobile. So we're driving and all of a sudden, like, we're bare ice, bare ice, bare ice, and the tracks dig into the snow yep. and the back end spun out. And I was trying to be the guy that tried to stop it because, you know, I'm the guy with very strong tiny muscles. Yes. <laughs> very strong. And it threw me off and I, uh, I fell off and you fell off and we broke we broke some stuff like yeah equipment my butt <laughs> yeah I'm just laying there I kind of got up and just stood up and Charlie's just laying there on the ground he kind of like looks down at himself he's like laying flat like this and he like lifts up his head I couldn't talk it hurt so and bad he, no 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 he, he lifts up his head like he's fine and then just his face like he just like his whole world just ended and then he just like crunches up a little bit and goes ah! it I was broke like, my butt it was something out of a comedy and he like puts his hand had on video footage of it. man I wish I was recording that would have oh. been really entertaining but we didn't let that stop us no we, we still went up. fished the whole weekend with a I had a broken tailbone like that thing hurt yeah yeah and you broke your transducer so we were shearing a transducer every single year there is a competition which means new beginnings new contestants yeah. even new prizes all running every single year you get a new yeah. fresh chance to get up there who knows you could win a cooler you could win nothing or you could win a prize of your lifetime so oh yeah there's always that Fine. kind of suspense yeah. to it I guess so if you okay here's a question okay so for all those people that are new coming to Lake Winnebago uh, for this tournament yep if you could only take two lures on this trip for Battle on Bago uh, what would you take okay so I'm gonna say for this I'm gonna say some sort of probably 1 16th ounce tungsten jig just because it's so versatile like mm -hmm. If you got crappie, perch, whatever you got down there, and t w tipping that with a wax worm or spikes, either way. I'm a wax guy. Uh, spikes, I'd actually prefer to do both personally. But yeah. 
um, one. And every year it's different. It's crazy. Every, every single year. Like, literally, that can be the smallest little change. There will be a guy that, like, puts a spike on, and a guy that puts a wax worm on. You'll be right next to each other. One guy slamming fish, and another guy will not get a yep. bite. And every year it switches. And every day it even switches. But yeah. for my first lure, I'd say that probably... What color? If I had to say, oh, that man, that would really depend on the day. But... I like Wonder Bread just because it is a really big versatile mm -hmm. color, and I also like uh, chartreuse. Come on, that's mine. What? Okay. Like a chartreuse? Okay, a, a tungsten? Yeah, okay, yeah, like okay. a tungsten. Okay. And, but if I had to choose one out of all of them, it would honestly just be a standard silver 1 16th ounce tungsten jig with wax worms on it. Okay. I feel like you could throw that down there. It's shiny, but yet it's still got enough. Like, if you got a little light like, going through the snow and the ice, or you just got bare ice, even better situation. It's got that little reflection right. on there to bring those fish in, get them interested. And for a second lure, yep. I'm second definitely going to say a spoon. And to be specific with it, it is a, a tablespoon? <laughs> yeah, it's a tablespoon. Yeah, you so drill a hole in it. Well, it's two holes. Two holes, yeah. Yes. One for the hook and then one for the line. There's and actually like, been videos dangles on there. And then basically, the fish jumps on your spoon and then you can eat that you fish with your spoon. Wow. <laughs> but if I had to be specific with this, it would be the clam flutter spoon. Um, they released a new one, I think, last year that I just picked up. It's like, yeah, it's their smallest size I make. You've got it. your sauger on that. Yeah, it was, it's a pretty cool color. I think it's like a pink and green. Uh, and it, it glows too. That is one of the cool yeah. things. So if I had those two colors, I'd be pretty confident. Uh, just tip those with either a minnow head or some wax worms, and you're pretty much set. So yeah. that that personally be what I'd take out. But what would you take out if you only had two options? For me, I'm not worried about the little fish on this tournament. I agree, those little jigs are great and they're versatile. But I would probably just stick with my chartreuse Swedish pimple. Swedish pimple. Swedish pimple. <laughs> the Swedish pimple size two. I really, really like that. Yeah. Um, and I'd probably just go with another Swedish pimple. Another um, one. <laughs> that would be hammered silver. For me, those have been my go-tos. Okay. And I really, really like them. But I had an idea we can for these people. If you check out Lake Winnebago Junkies, which is a Facebook page, yeah. that is so beneficial to being able to get all this info before the tournament. So I pulled it up. I'll just quick read some of the comments Whoa, on all okay. the people. Okay, maybe maybe <laughs> if there's some rebuttals because people can be mean. Which is not very nice. <laughs> yeah, that, that's definitely not nice. But, um, yes, Hammer Gold Pimple, Clown Wrap, uh, Wonder Bread, okay. There's the Wonder Bread. Whatever they are biting on that day. Uh, Sure. Oh, I like this. If it ain't chartreuse, it ain't no use. Wow. Yes. There you go. Clown jigging wrap. Okay. Jigging wraps are pretty effective they are. too. I I've, just... I've seen a lot of people do really good on them. I've just never personally... They seem to be hit and miss. They're either you catch so many fish on them or you just don't catch yeah. a thing. But that is like... And I prefer them smaller, honestly. Same. I don't like the bigger... Well, there's like a medium size. Uh, yeah, it's up there. Whatever. So, uh, yeah, I like them like... You know, an inch and a half cross? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you tell me, clown. Oh, there's another clown. Yeah. Hammer gold, black and gold, perch, wonder bread. I, I, honestly, when you look at these pages, wonder bread seems to it really will, dominate. It will keep dominate. popping up. Wonder bread is just such a good color to go with. Spoon orange. Hmm. Silver or light green, okay. Uh, clown wraps all day. Okay. Okay. Whatever is working that day. Orange, mm -hmm. chartreuse. Uh, Anti-freeze slender spoon. Have you heard of that? I don't think I have. Huh? I haven't. That one's different. Wow, this person really likes fire tiger. It says fire tiger, fire tiger, fire tiger. I know a lot of people have had a thing for fire tiger for a long time. I don't time. think I've ever used them for ice fishing. Like it's one of the, it's been a color that has been out literally almost longer than any other. It's. It, I mean, I use it in the summer and it does pretty good. Yeah. Uh, perch colored anything works. Fire tiger. Personal preference, uh, magic spoon. I don't know if they were just being funny. Is that a thing? Yeah, it's called the magic spoon. Okay, well, teach me about it. What is? It? So I'm actually. Gonna okay, well, he looks that up. White bass wrap, gold. Um, I have a buddy, and I believe he really, really likes gold. That's one of his favorite. Not that that matters to you, but gold is another big one out there. Someone says orange, orange, orange. Oh, interesting. Purple, purple, and then some more purple, which I actually can agree because purple. For a jigging wrap, if I was taking it out there, usually purple is my favorite color. Um, pink with a white tail. Anything copper. Hmm. Have you ever tried copper out there? 
I don't think so. I don't think I have either. Antifreeze, Glow Hot Perch, the Wonder Bread. There we go with the Wonder Bread. I got a black one that go that I think you meant to say glows in the dark. That's interesting. I start with pink, chartreuse next, then white, very clear water, black or blue. And then the last one says number three, gold clown jigging wrap. Oh, the, the Flutter, Flutter Magic. Max Magic Spoon. So it's basically like a Swedish pimple that's like, well, this one's gold, but instead of being like flat, it like has it's like a, a little bit more out, outwards, like a yeah. V shape on the outside. Yeah, huh. it's pretty. It's different. Which honestly, with how much pressure they get out there and stuff, yeah, different is key. I think that's why uh, that Sauger had bit that year, and I did have yeah. quite a few other bites. I just could not get the hook set right because I didn't have my fish finder down there, so. I didn't know when they were quite coming up, and it was just there was a lot going on. But thankfully, got that worked out this year. So, also, saugers are so disappointing when you catch a sauger because oh, so it was years ago that I was fishing, and I caught this nice sauger, and I was so excited. It was a dark tent, you know, my yeah. rod finally bent, and honestly, it was a <laughs> slow day, and it bent. I mean, I'm like, this is a good fish. If yeah. this is a walleye, I will be entering it, and I will be up in there close to that truck I hope mm. you know and so all of a sudden it just pulls out and you know my rose colored glasses were on I'm like ha oh, that's my walleye <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm like yeah 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 and then all of a sudden I noticed it was a sauger and saugers aren't allowed no they're not. although a lot of people enter them and that's wrong so don't do that don't be that guy don't do that that's just mean I've heard of yeah just don't do that I appreciate the volunteers that help, but usually the volunteers that help aren't quite as diehard about the tournament, which usually means they don't always know what the fish are quite as well. I don't know. I've heard of somebody that they said they took in a perch, and the person, the the, the one of the weigh-in people, wasn't sure if it was a walleye. If you cheat, they hook you up to a lie detector test, Whoa. and you have to prove that you're actually not cheating. So that would be exciting. I wonder, do you think if we would win something big and they hooked us up to a lie detector test, could we video it? I don't see why not. That would be pretty interesting. That would be cool. be like, do you really think my muscles are tiny? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. I lied. Extra small. Tickets are about 40 bucks. Yeah, they're, they're pricey. I think they adjust every year slightly. Yeah. The raffle tickets are kind of fun. I won a clam C5600 with the Annan insulator. I won that a while ago. I have sold it now just because it was such a big shack and it just didn't really have any benefits for at least how I fish. So just go over to the tent, buy yourself a raffle ticket, or go to Fleet and Farm. They yep. sell raffle tickets too. Get yourself some raffle tickets. I believe you have to take it in though. Yeah, you have to take it in person to the tent, which is like a big party tent. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's one for $5 and maybe five for $20, I think. Yeah, something like something that. Something like that. So what are your hopes for this uh, ch championship or actually uh, <laughs> the champion? Well, I just made that sound really <laughs> awesome. Yeah. What are your hopes for this year's tournament? Uh, not to break my butt. That's a really good I point. really don't want to break my butt <laughs> again because... It still hurts sometimes. <laughs> and um, the wrong rainy day and Charlie's feeling it. Honestly, I want to have a good time with you. Yeah. And I would really, really like if you guys would subscribe. Like our last video, we had like a lot of views and very high retention time. Yeah. Please hit subscribe because then that encourages us to make more videos. Lots more but, videos. So more of you that subscribe the more we are literally going to produce more videos, which means more subscribers, which means yeah. more videos. And so even better videos. And yeah, we like, just really we are always, we're very, okay. We really want to put out the highest quality content we can for all of you. So if you can support us in doing that and actually allow us to be out more often, we would really, really appreciate that. And one easy way that you can do that is to subscribe and also like, <laughs> <laughs> wow, the YouTube algorithm is really, really hard to deal with. Oh, come on, yeah. So just subscribe, that would be my hopes. But honestly, even not catching a winning walleye, I want to catch a walleye, you know, again this year. I didn't have a walleye last year. Just want a walleye. I've had walleyes in the past, and man, it just makes you happy when you get one for that day. Because that day, honestly, I think that lake gets pounded so hard, those fish are just not as turned on at the moment. You know what? I agree with you there. What's your hopes, dude? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, honestly, I, like it would be really cool to get some fish to enter. But what would be really awesome 
was to be out to just go out there and absolutely just slay them. I don't care if we're absolutely just like that would be awesome. Like if we're I've had good days yeah, out there like that, like and it is just, where they're just oh. popping through the ice, biting, aggressive. It doesn't really matter if they're not like huge or something. If you're getting still like some decent sized perch, let's or, be honest. If they're huge, that's awesome. That's like, even better. If you're better. crying because you didn't buy more Battle on Vago tickets, <laughs> that, that's, that's a good, good situation. Yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna say this, but. Technically, this is wrong because you're not meant to actually give your giveaway tickets away. But a lot of times, I actually don't to don't sell them. Yeah, do not sell them. But people will give them just randomly the last day. If you go on like Facebook pages and stuff, they'll be like, "Does anybody need an extra uh, uh, ticket or something?" That sometimes happens. So if they do run out of tickets, maybe you can uh, pick one up from someone. Do not buy it because that's technically illegal. So don't I don't do know, that. is it? In the championship, it is it's, ice conditions this year. I kind of think that mo for the most part, other than the real ballsy dudes, most likely, unless the weather is cold for the next three weeks, we're not going to see it. It's it's a possible. ton of car traffic. I mean, you don't want to just drive out there because you see ice out there, or you see another person out there, so you just start driving out there because if, if you're oh. going to, yes. yes, 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 yes. So if you're new to this and you're driving a vehicle out there, do not. Do not go driving off the west side near all the rivers because Dude. every single year that this has happened, people go through because they drive by the rivers and they don't know anything about this lake. So if you are adamant that you're going to drive and you know nothing about this lake, I would suggest possibly maybe going to the east side. East side, and but if you do decide to go to the west side, another place to stay away from is the island on the west side. Yeah. There is, I think that almost has more cars fall through than yeah. any of the rivers. And like, you just don't want to be that guy because it's like you're out your car, you have to pay for them to retrieve that. You can't I be in you the tournament fun, anymore. <laughs> which is yeah. Well, you could be. You jump out, you grab a You're pole. You're like, let's as go. As long as you grab that pole before the car goes under. You fish yeah. the hole in your car. <laughs> <laughs> you were <laughs> needing an auger. <laughs> People would think you were sturgeon spearing. No, you'd get in trouble though, because you're only supposed to have a hole that's like you didn't you know, drill it the size of your face. You didn't, you know? you didn't make the right. hole. I believe I saw a few days ago. Brother Town was they check at those fishing clubs every tenth of a mile, and from one mile from zero to four miles, I think they have yeah. roughly eight inches of ice off the road. But that changes every day. Yep. So that's really the beneficial part about finding all these social media groups. Definitely uh, another good place to go. I think it's died off at the last while, but. It used to be really, really popular is Lake Link. Oh, wow. Like <laughs> I haven't been on there in a long time. My name is literally Sorry Charlie. I think mine is just literally you know, Josh. like the tuna fish that <laughs> wow. you know, the commercial wow. that was before. I, hey, that's what I had for lunch today. I'm not kidding. You had tuna fish? Yeah, I had tuna oh. fish. For, sorry Charlie, tuna fish. <laughs> I can tell it's in your muscles. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, oh, man. i take the truck, sell it, pay taxes because <laughs> government and um you probably saw the mercury marine engine yeah so downsize on it. i don't know how big is the engine like five thousand horsepower you get to keep okay. the boat yeah the boat's yours that's cheaper yeah it always seems like there's a camp out at exactly at two miles there are always and a camp is. out at like four miles like what's up with the one and three being like do, does no one like odd numbers okay so <laughs> number that's true and another thing here is there's pretty much two options well this is going to be pretty obvious okay you can either go out on the lake, wow, or in the parking lot. <laughs> you won't catch any fish in the parking lot. You can either go out on the lake, find those groups of people, find where a lot of people are camped up, and there's a good likelihood you'll have fish swim through. It's probably not going to be a crazy bite because there's a lot of people around you, but there's a good chance if you go to an edge or something, you're going to get into I wouldn't fish. I know. I always try to go the opposite direction because I that's, hate fishing and that's, my people. That's the other option. It's, it's like, okay, you know, what I really hate, but you got it. If you don't like fishing by people, uh, Battle of Vago is not for you. Because it's no. basically like, let's say you just set up, pretend to be fishing right now, okay? And you're in your ice shanty, right? And it's closed. And all of a sudden you hear, then you hear, <laughs> <laughs> and so you, you're like, I have to know what that is. So you open your window, <laughs> and you hear the noise stop, <laughs> and you see a guy, and he's like, Hey, do you got any wax worms <laughs> in there? Like, that's too close. You get your fish. You're closer. All right. You're All centered. right. We'll talk to you later.